episode. Welcome to another episode of the School of Airway. Uh, this is Dr. Torres, a New, York, a New York doctor who works in and lives in Queens. Welcome back. Uh, so today we're going to talk about the topic tomahawk intubations. It's a topic that one of my residents brought up because he was very excited that he experimented a lot with airways and he was a former paramedic. So we're going to talk about uh, how do we do this? So classically, we could use a VL blade, but I'm going to try to tell you that if we have technologies like video laryngoscopes, you can actually do this a lot easier, especially with channel devices. Uh, I speak out of a person, like from a perspective of a person who's used channel devices. I don't think they are harmful to people. They are a different way of intubating. And if you learn the technique, it's not harmful. Now, if you could be ignorant about VL and not know the limitations of VL, like contaminated airways, being too close to mucosa, or being uh, having fake experience in that you only use it on a mannequin and never use it on live patients, hey, but I'm an experienced airway person with channel devices and I want to show you that if you have someone who's comatose, already induced into a GCS state of three, and possibly has no gag reflex, don't know yet until you test it, and I'm not going to test it with the a tongue depressor, I'm going to test it with a device that would intubate the patient. It could be drug overdose, co-ingestions, CO2 narcosis, or a patient, you have to consider this for a person who is lethargic already and especially cannot lie flat because he has bad orthopnea with hypoxia. They can't tolerate any apneic op oxygenation if you give them a RSI. Right? If you paralyze them, definitely they're their window of safe oxygenation of the level between 100 and 90 is going to be very short. How do you know? Because you tried it, maybe, and you failed on your intubation on the same patient. Or you notice that they would immediately deset the minute, the minute you took them off the bike of the CPAP machine. Or they're so short of breath from orthopnea that you don't have the, uh, the idea or you forgot to think of DSI. You're thinking, like, wow, how can I intubate this patient who's hypoxic and I'm really worried about lying flat? So instead of intubating from the back, standing in the back of the stretcher, you can actually intubate them face to face. And of course, the patient is very big, very obese, and already has autopnea, and already has episodes of apnea right in front of you while they're just taking breaths. Just think about this uh, technique. This is like a fake awake intubation technique. They've been made lethargic and induced into a comatose state already by some other medical problem, and I'm taking advantage of it without paralysis. Okay, so this is our victim, or I mean our patient. His eyes are half open, half closed, lethargic. How you doing? No verbal response, now opening his eyes. Now you have a painful stimuli, not moving at all. So I think this guy may be a candidate for needing an airway protection and needed to be connected to a ventilator. But I'm afraid that he may desat. I'm gonna take advantage of this GCS of three induced coma state. So I'm gonna go and use my video laryngoscope already preloaded and see if I can intubate with this device. Uh, advantage of a channel device, you don't have to use a stylet, right? So uh, now the issue is opening the mouth like always, right? Open the mouth. Don't break teeth. Try to find the airway. And it looks like I found it. And now it holds up the Articulate, oh, almost missed, almost got it. You have to get better, good enough view that they get, this tube will go in past the cords. And that's the issue, right? Oh, got it in. Disengage, a little bit of gag, because I didn't sedate or paralyze them. And that's your intubation. Does that look hard? It may be. We will also compare what happens if you use a DO blade with a glide scope type of device or with. Um, a Macintosh that's not VL okay but for those who say that's impossible it's not impossible compare this technique to standing up above him behind him technique so you're about to see me intubate this gentleman from above All right. he's already lethargic hasn't been paralyzed if I can't intubate him from this and I'm so afraid that he's gonna get desat he's gonna desat I'll have to climb up on the stretcher 
hi there and intubate them from above. Is it possible? I think it will be. I see something. What do I see? I think I see something. The tube is going in. It's amazing how people are going to ask me to confirm placement. Now I, just, I need to confirm how deep it is. Flip line 21, 22. It's possible. So, for those who think it's impossible, it's not. All right? So compare. Getting up on the top of the, feel like you're on top of the world, intubating from the top of the patient, over the patient. If I were six foot five, six foot six, or even seven foot, I'd actually consider intubating patients from this position. All right. Uh, this is a severe ramp position or face to face. Technique. Thank you for your time and patience, and please come back for another episode of School of Airway with Dr. Torres.